Did you date him? No. Can I just clarify that I did not have a physical relationship with him? Those rumors are true, and I'm not going to deny them. I'm upset now. Oh, gee, that's supposed to be me in the video with the goat seat? Wow, Mariah didn't expect it to go balls out. Shut the f*** up before I put all them phone calls out. And I was like, why are you so obsessed with me? Mariah Carey was right. Eminem has been obsessed with her for years. She says he's been acting like a stalker and can't leave her name out of his mouth. But Eminem has another story and claims that Mariah was obsessed with him when they dated for six months. There's a lot of confusion about their relationship and their feud. So let's get into it. Relationships in Hollywood can be complicated and messy, especially when two celebrities try to get together. And that's what seems to have happened with Mariah Carey and rapper Eminem, but it did not go down smoothly. Let me take you guys back to the year 2001, because Mariah and Eminem were at the top of their game. So Mariah asked Eminem to come and do a feature on her album. According to Eminem, the two dated for several months, but Mariah claims that their relationship was purely professional. Now, I don't know how they have this misunderstanding because I feel like if you are dating, it's clear that you have this, you know, this bond, but uh, Mariah's denying it. So it would be weird if Eminem would say that he dated her when they were clearly just working professionally. Those rumors are true and I'm not going to deny them. So after Eminem did that interview, Mariah had to go around and explain herself and tell everyone that she never actually had been with Eminem. So you, did you date him? No. Can I just clarify that I did not have a physical relationship with him? I did not have a, an intimate relationship. I've been with less men than I can, you know, than on one hand. So he's not one of those men. It's a little bizarre to see how Eminem will go and do these interviews and share a little bit too much. And then these other women have to go and explain their situations. It kind of reminds me of what he did to Christina Aguilera. So I have to ask you about Eminem too. Is it what true you guys had a, has, had a relationship? Define relationship. Is it true? <laughs> let me. I'm. I'm um, is it true that uh, you went out on dates? No. No. Dates? No. No. Mm -hmm. Never a relationship there. Rel define relationship. Friendship. I was friends with him. Okay. Cool. That's it. Cool. Okay. Physical anything? No. <laughs> <laughs> is that clear? I like that. So Mariah is very stern about the fact that she has never been with Eminem and do you know Eminem must be pissed off by that because in 2002 the year after he goes on to rap about her twice he raps what are you trying to be my new wife what you Mariah fly through twice in another rap he writes what the f you take me for a joke you smoking crack for I do that, I beg Mariah to take me back. Oh my gosh. When Eminem released his album, everyone questioned, oh wait, they dated? And he was quoted saying, there's truth to that, but on a whole personal level, I'm not really feeling it. I just don't like her as a person. So you must admit, it's a little bit weird for Eminem to be so hung up on Mariah, especially if they've only hung out like four times and probably each of those conversations involved them talking about a project together because Mariah did want to work with him initially. Well, Mariah used her album as an opportunity to put out a song titled Clown, where she's saying you should have never said that we were lovers when you know very well we never touched each other. I guess at one point she took her plane to go and see him for a meeting and she even addressed those rumors saying that <laughs> she took her G5 for a 20 minute plane ride to go and see him and that wasn't nothing like that, that just it wasn't special. It's like her normal. So um, even though he may be flattered and going around saying like, you know, Mariah took a plane one day to go and hang out with me. She's claiming that this is just like her getting in the car and going down the street. Mariah Carey lashes out on her new album, the target rapper Eminem. The pop diva has written a song to the bad boy rapper. It's called Clown and it's no love song. So this song made waves. I mean, she never said Eminem's name directly, but she didn't need to. Everyone knew that this track was all about him. The album cut Clown is rumored to be about the rapper. In the lyrics, she says, I should have left it at how you doing. I should have left it at I like your music too. And I should have never called you back when you pursued me. I should have never given you my fucking two way. I should have never listened to your woeful stories. The ones I'm sure you told a thousand times before me. You should have never intimated we were lovers. We well, you know very well we never even touched each other. 
So Mariah said her piece, and after that song came out, she started to just act in denial, kind of like a Jennifer Lopez moment. Like, oh, I don't know, you know, who that is. Like, she now just doesn't know who Eminem is. Und was ist mit J Lo? I don't know. Die kenne ich nicht. Oops. Mariah has used her music to go back and forth with people, and in this instance, she decided to go and perform her song Clown, and she actually parodied Eminem during the performance. She had a dancer sport a blonde wig and a Detroit jersey, pretending to essentially be Eminem while she sings this song, which is all about him. Since Mariah started poking fun at Eminem during her performances, he decided to do the same. But during his tour, he played voicemail messages supposedly from Mariah of her saying, why won't you see me? Why won't you call me? One of Mariah's friends told the press that an imposter had recorded the messages. It's not Mariah's voice. <laughs> So Mariah and her team have denied that that is her voice. She's saying that's not her. And of course, Eminem is not going to let up. He raps about her in a song called Jimmy Crack Corn, and he talks about sexting the singer. He also goes on to rap about her in another song titled Bagpipes from Baghdad, where he calls out Nick Cannon and calls him a prick, saying that he wishes him luck with the effing whore. Like, I don't think I can say that word. He raps, locked in Mariah's wine cellar, all I had for lunch was bread, wine, more bread, wine, Captain Crunch. Red wine for breakfast and for brunch, and to soak it up in between snacks, crackers to munch. <laughs> okay. Mariah, whatever happened to us? Why did we have to break up? All I asked for was a glass of punch. You see, I never really asked for much. Um, Nick Cannon better back the F up. I'm not playing, I want her back, you punk. Now this song was harsh, and there's no denying that. So Nick Cannon wrote a blog post, which has now been deleted, and it's pretty long, but he essentially says that he respects Eminem's rap and his flow, that he's great at writing, but like, you haven't even gotten to second base with my wife, and you are being incredibly disrespectful, also accusing him of being racist. He said that's some real middle school stuff right there. What type of grown man lies about getting with a chick, only Slim Lamey. Nick said he would return to rapping solely to ruin Eminem's career. Nick claimed he deleted the blog post not because anyone instructed him to take it down, but because all the web traffic from it nearly crashed his website. He said he still stood by everything he wrote. Now, Nick Cannon's approach was pretty mature. He didn't call Eminem names, he called him out on the clear facts. And Eminem seems desperate. During interviews, he's calling Mariah a B word, a see you next Tuesday, claiming that now they had a relationship for a good six or seven months. So now it's, it's not a couple months, it's like a half a year. He claims he's bothered by the fact that she denied they ever had anything. And that's why he keeps rapping about her and making jokes that he is gonna pee on her. Just weird, immature things. I'd rather just pee on a woman. <laughs> <laughs> a grown woman. Wait a minute. Not that Kelly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not a grown woman. <laughs> We're taking callers right now. Any women who want to be peed on. I think uh, Mariah Carey's on line 12. You want to piss on her? She wants to get pissed um, on. Yeah. I already did that. <laughs> <laughs> Now, besides Nick Cannon's blog response, we haven't seen much from Mariah until she releases the song titled Obsessed. And honestly, is she wrong? He seems very much obsessed. It seems like it's a direct response to his bagpipe song. She sings, you're delusional boy, you're losing your mind. It must be the weed, it must be the E. Why are you so obsessed with me, lying that you're sexing me? She even kind of shades the entire plane situation again, saying, you're a mom and pop, I'm a corporation, I'm a president conference your conversation i still i love that song it's one of my favorites so it's pretty clear she's talking about eminem and if you aren't convinced then look at the music video because she dresses up just like him even though she doesn't want to address him by name she's clearly again using her music as her platform and her way to express herself and honestly the song is a bop and the story is telling how do you get out of being in disguise you like the anonymity of it i love the anonymity of it 
Nick was saying, yeah, you, you should do the play the stalker. And I was like, yeah, I could do that. And then everybody started having their own speculations about who the stalker was. Right. I'm like, look, m me? And when I look at that stalker and me with the beard and the whole nine yards, like that, I look like my cousin Chris. <laughs> so <laughs> basically, you know, all the speculation about who I'm playing in the video is it's not it's not accurate now this song was a hit and it got a lot of press a lot of people were talking and eminem doesn't like that so of course he comes out with a song shortly after saying i got the same exact tat that's on nick's back her husband i'm obsessed now oh gee is that supposed to be me in the video with the goatee wow mariah i didn't expect you to go balls out b word shut the f up before i pull them phone calls out he raps when you were on my privates my dick i gave you something to smile about how many times you fly to my house still trying to count better shut your lying mouth if you don't want nick to find out you probably think because it's been so long if i had something on you i would have did it by now so that was just the beginning and his next verse gets a lot more violent he raps enough dirt on you to murder you this is what the f i do mariah did it ever occur to you that i still have the pictures however you prefer to do and that goes for nick too and then he uses a slur you think I'm scared of you? You're gonna ruin my career, you better get one. I'm gonna sit and fight with you over some, a bunch of slurs. Second base, what the F did you tell Nick, pumpkin? The second week we were dry humping. That's gotta count for something. <laughs> Listen, girly, surely you don't want me to talk about how I netted early, ooh. And I busted all over your belly and almost started hurling. Oh my gosh, gross. But if I'm embarrassing me, I'm embarrassing you. And don't you dare say it isn't true. So that song was a lot to unpack. There's even more lyrics there, but those are some of the highlights. In response to Eminem, Nick Cannon made a Facebook page promoting a charity boxing match. Eminem never agreed to a boxing match against Nick, but Nick just made it up as a response that he's ready to fight. Of course, this fight never happened, but Nick went on to put together a song that references one of Eminem's prior pieces, which kind of exposed him for his racist thoughts. And you must admit, this song is gross. It came out in 1993, it's titled Foolish Pride, and he raps about black girls saying they are B-words, saying that they are dumb, just really disrespectful. Well, in the third disc song, you actually played a piece of his racist song. Very song. racist. Black Beyond girls racist. are bitches, black girls are dumb. Yeah. You gotta keep playing that over and over again. Yeah, black girls are bitches, black girls are dumb. He calls them hoes and like it, it goes, he tells don't trust them, white girls are better, white girls, like, like, oh, if you listen to the entire song, it's clearly a song where he's blatantly disrespecting black queens. Not, uh, not beating around the bush. The hook, <laughs> the, what he said is black girls are bitches and black girls are dumb. He raps blacks and whites, they sometimes mix, but black girls only want your money because they are dumb chicks. Oh my God, he is disgusting. Don't date a black girl. If you do it once, you won't do it twice. What, ugh. White girls are good chicks. He's, okay, so yeah, he is clearly racist. And it's actually weird because like, how does he even have this thought process? So Nick Cannon dug this song up and he used it as part of his diss track claiming that Eminem isn't this good guy and that he's got these disgusting beliefs. Now, Eminem has tried to erase these songs from his past because they are distasteful. But these racist songs became available in the year 2003 when some of Eminem's old friends screwed him over and sold the rights to them. At that point, Eminem was 21 and he actually tried to sue these people to stop them, but he couldn't hold back the release. So these songs were available and people got to see his true colors. So apparently these three do who used to be friends with Eminem back in the day had been trying to sell these tapes for over a year for $50,000. So they finally ended up at the doors of the source after all the Benzino diss track stuff happened. Benzino wouldn't give them 50K, but he did give them 15K. After the source had got their hands on these tapes, they then held a press conference, inviting as many journalists down as possible in the hopes of encouraging some sort of national outcry and getting Eminem an old fashioned canceling. So this is a big deal, and I'm glad that people are listening to it because they should be exposing this behavior. In one of his songs, he compares white women to black women, calls black women monkeys and B-words, and then in another song, he uses the end slur. So clearly this guy has some problems and there's some things you can't change. So I wouldn't want to promote him or support him in any way. Blacks and whites, sometimes mixed. 
But black girls only want your money cause of dumb chicks So I'ma say like this Don't date a black girl, take it as a piss If you want, but if you don't I'ma tell you like this, I surely won't Never date a black girl because blacks only want your money And that's it ain't funny Black girls and white girls just don't mix Because black girls are dumb and white girls are good chicks White girls are good, I like white girls I like white girls all over the world Get straight to the point, black girls are bitches That's why I'ma tell you, you better pull up your bridges Like the bone, have the big butt No they don't, cause I don't like that shit I just here to make a bigger hit now Eminem did apologize for this song and he claims that he was just really angry after a breakup with his girlfriend and he says it was something he did out of frustration he was a stupid teenager but still like how did you even have this mentality especially like you're from Detroit you know what his apology was probably the weakest apology ever I was young and I had a black girlfriend this is what he said I had a black girlfriend who cheated on me, who cheated on me and I was mad hmm, doesn't that sound familiar that sounds like familiar behavior right because apparently he was mad at Mariah for lying on him. So therefore he can call her all kind of bitches and hoes and cunts and all of that type of stuff. So, oh, when this white man gets angry, it's fair game. He can talk and say whatever the f he wants to say about black girls as long as he apologizes when he's no longer angry. So Eminem clearly has some behaviors and there's a pattern here, which are <laughs> filled up red flags. And I mean, I can't imagine any person that actually like marries him and is like with him and has a family with him because his mind doesn't work like everyone else's and that's clear when you see that people are joining mariah's side there's really no one on eminem's side at one point ja rule and Busta rhymes defended mariah saying leave her alone they also called out eminem for insulting a woman like it seems like he has a lot of feuds with people and like half of them are ladies so what is his problem here but in 2010 eminem decided he had a change of heart he claims i really don't want to talk about her anymore i don't want to keep beating a dead horse i'm not even going to comment about it i'm done with that whole situation i said what i had to say i'm done he also acknowledges that some of his past songs like the baghdad song uh was very harsh and he does feel a little bit bad about it but not not that bad but then six years later the feud was reignited again because nick and mariah had split up and nick decided he wanted to talk about it he claims he never had an issue with eminem he was actually a big fan of his music but he was was crossing a line when it came to Mariah and it was disrespectful so he actually challenged Eminem to a rap battle at one point but that never came about now in 2019 he was also asked about this feud and he claims that Eminem is still one of his favorite rappers but there was a situation that happened and they do need to talk about it and you know I guess find some closure at some point but it seems like Eminem is just trying to sway away while like Nick Cannon is all over TV doing these interviews talking about his life with Mariah and how Eminem was involved. So I wrote this long ass letter uh -huh. pretty much saying look I respect you as an artist. Right. I'm actually a fan. I think you're one of the best to ever do it. But from man to man, you talking out of pocket to my wife, you gotta be held accountable for that. So I need to see you face to face. Now in 2020, we start to hear from Mariah again. She just completed her memoir in July, 2020, and Eminem was worried for what was gonna come. He knows Mariah is gonna say very negative things about him. He is expecting an onslaught and almost welcomes it. And Mariah did share a lot in her memoir. So if I was Eminem, I would be scared too. Kind of like how Justin Timberlake should have been very, well, he was, very scared for Britney's book as he should have been and now look what happened to him so that's how Eminem was probably feeling kind of like Justin Timberlake we're getting the memoir soon what's that gonna be like darling you're not ready <laughs> no I really mean it oh, really? yeah revealing um honest and just a really cathartic experience that I'm working on it yeah now Eminem had nothing to worry about because Mariah didn't have room in her book for his nonsense, which honestly, if I was Eminem, I think I'd be like more offended that she didn't include me. But when it comes to her song Obsessed, she will always shade that it is about Eminem. It was the 12th year anniversary of the song's release and she decided to do a viral TikTok challenge where she seemingly dressed up like the character from the music video who is essentially Eminem. Wipe it down. Wipe, wipe, and I was like, wipe, why are you so obsessed with me? Wipe, wipe, wipe it down. Wipe, wipe it down. Wipe, wipe it down. Wipe. We haven't heard much more from Mariah since that TikTok video, and I don't think we're going to hear much because I think Eminem thinks he was a bigger part of Mariah's life than he really was. But I want to hear what you guys think in the comments below, and I'll see you in a new video soon. Bye, guys.